So I wanna show you how to get all of the code in the course, and I'm gonna show you how to get additional bonus code in this course. And to do that, I'm gonna bring up uh, the course, and you saw here, this is an update video. You saw here we've looked at the bash commands, and then we looked at install and go, and we saw go modules and introduction, and go mod init. And then this here, the go workspace, I left this in for legacy code, just to be clear. And that's how uh, workspaces used to be organized. Um, but I wanted to make sure that that was in there in case you come across legacy code, you sort of understand what's going on with that. And there's good information about Go environment variables and everything in there. And we looked more at environment variables. And right now we're right here after this VS Code lecture. And I wanna, in this lecture here, uh, I wanna provide this video that you're watching right now as a, a, a preface to lecture on IDEs because in there I'm gonna talk about going and getting the code but there's something that needs to be updated about that because of Go modules, which is why this video exists. So I'm gonna show you right now how to go get the code. And uh, to do that, I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer, and in here I'm gonna create a folder, so Control-Shift-N to create a new folder, and I'm just gonna call this, you know, example, uh, example Go code right there. And then I'll launch my Bash terminal. So I'm gonna launch Bash. And uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. And control plus makes my bash bigger on Windows. And one little snafu that some students have run into is that when you get into uh, bash here, if you like say, what working directory am I in? It just shows you a root. And if you say, what is in that root? It has like a user folder right there, right, USR. But when I come over here and I look at this folder I just created, I'm gonna right click example code and choose properties. It tells me that I'm in C and then users all the way spelled out. I know that's really hard and small to see. I don't know how to make that bigger. <laughs> but uh, I need to get to that place in my directory. And to do that, I'm just gonna go CD C forward slash. And now when I do my print working directory, you can see I'm in, in the C, the root of the C drive. Here I was just in root, here I'm in the root of the C drive. And when I do um, a list out of everything that's in there, LSLA or LS, I have users right there. So now I could go into users and I could go into editor and I could go into documents. So I'm gonna go CD users and I could hit tab to complete that word edit and then tab completes the word and documents tab completes the word and the one I need to get into is uh, what did I call it example CD example uh, go code and now I'm going to create create a, a go mod a go module so go mod init and then I have to give the module name and for namespacing it's good to use a domain because a domain is specific to a project or to you or an organization and like the namespacing kind of creates, you know, a way for keeping things organized, you know, keeping code organized. And GitHub has its own natural namespacing. So if you have a GitHub repo, you know, um, you could use your GitHub domain and then, you know, whatever folders, slashes you have for where that code lives on GitHub. And so that might be like uh, here, Right, I have github.com goes to 11's my username and then go link training. That's a type of namespacing right there that is uh, associated with a domain, right? So that's a type of namespacing. But I could namespace this however I want. So I could just call it example.com, you know, test, right? And there's my namespace. So I just initialize that. And now if I look in that namespace to see what's in there, ls-la, I could see I have go mod. And, uh, and I've created a go mod directory. Well, in the next lecture, what you're gonna see is you could run this go get dash D and then you know some code, some, some repo to go get that code. And it's going to download all of that code for you. Uh, a slight modification is you have to add a forward slash and then dot, 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 three dots, right? Three dots, which means go get all of that code. And, uh, and then there's gonna be, it's gonna be put into a different location. Um, than when we use the older way to do that. So I'm gonna show you where that location is. So let's just uh, get that first. And to find all of the code, I just wanna point this out. There's goes to 11 go programming, okay? And so there's some code samples in here. This uh, introductory course, most of the stuff we're gonna do at the, is at the Golang playground. 
You're going to see that in a second. So there isn't a whole lot of code to download. And it kind of takes away the need to have an editor because we're just learning the fundamentals of the language. And we could do a lot of that just by using the Golang Playground, which is right here. Right, and so uh, we'll be using the Golang Playground. Um, and like if we hit share on that code, here's uh, go.dev forward slash play, right? And this is the Golang Playground. So that's where we're gonna do a lot of our coding. Um, but if you wanted to, of course, use an IDE, you're welcome to do that. And if you're comfortable and familiar with that, but if you're new to coding, you know, this is already running. So it's super easy and we'll write a lot of code there. I uh, have a second version of this course, right? Golang Training, which you already have access to. So the first version of the course is everything through like lecture uh, 204, <laughs> right? And that's all of this code right here, Go Programming at my repo. And then the next version of the course, which was the original version of the course that I created, is everything after lecture 205 and that's all this code here golang training and so i presented different examples i talked about different subjects um, all the basics were also covered there but it provides just additional material that's uh, useful and it gives you all this code so i'm going to show you how to get the code now and to do that i'm just going to like grab this repo right here and because uh, it's the one i've already downloaded the other one it's the one with all this code now where this is gonna download this code, if you go and you look at, if you look at um, the Go uh, Lang blog and using Go modules, so let's just go to that. So if I went Go Lang blog, blog using Go modules, it's gonna bring me to the Go Lang blog and uh, using Go modules, this post right here, but there's several posts there. And uh, one of the things that's good to know is that inside GoPath source for compatibility, the Go command still runs in the old GoPath mode. So it has backwards compatibility. Um, and then there's also this Go command documentation. And so if we look at the Go command documentation and then type in modules, right? We have a lot of information about modules in here. So GoPath and modules and uh, you know different things about modules in there. And one of the things which is good to look at, I already brought this up, so I'm just going to where I brought it up. In earlier versions of Go, GoGit was used to build and install packages. Now, GoGit is dedicated to adjusting dependencies in GoMod. GoInstall may be used to build and install commands instead. So that's that's good to know. Um, but now we're going to use GoGit uh, to um, bring down those dependencies. And that's like this in the next upcoming le lecture, this command right there. So to do that, um, one of the things I want to look at is uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go get it and I'll show you where it is. So I'm gonna do go get dash D. And if you wanna know what these commands are, you could always just type in go help. And go help gives you a little bit of information there at the command line. I could say go help uh, get, right? So I wanna get help about go get. And then it shows the dash D flag instructs go get not to build or install packages. Right, so this is a bit of a, again, a bit of that legacy code because it automatically go get no longer installs uh, packages, but you know, we're just being very explicit about our command there. So we're gonna do print working directory and then go get dash D and I'm gonna paste in that URL and uh, oops, I copied that, it's not what I want. Let me escape out of that. Go get, I'll just go like this, go get dash D. And I need to come back over here and get the URL. There it is, control C. And I'm not getting the HTTPS stuff, just the GitHub forward. And let me minimize that so you could have clarity on this window right there. I'm gonna paste that in. And then forward slash dot, 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 okay? So that's, that's what we need right there. It's gonna go get everything recursively. So I'm gonna hit that in and it says it's downloading it. And then there was a couple of examples. If there's a few examples for dependencies and things like that, which I, uh, which, you know, I since removed from the directory, it'll say, hey, I couldn't find that. But um, it's getting all the code. That's a lot of code. 
All right, so it downloaded all the code. Uh, there's a few examples that I had in there, which, um, you know, I'd removed, which aren't, you know, so didn't find those, and that's fine. But now let's go see where that code lives in the new Go modules world. And to find that code, I'm gonna go into Go, go ENV, which shows me my environment variables. And it's gonna be living under my Go path, uh, go path area. So I need to go into Go path, and that's at C users editor Go for my setup. And uh, it might be different for yours, but that's where I need to get to. So right now, if I look at my directory, that's where I'm at. And so I need to go up uh, out of one, out of two, and now I should be an editor. And now I'm gonna CD into Go. And now I'm gonna look to see what, so I can see I'm there now, C users, editor, Go. And I can look to see what's in there. And then I wanna go into my packages, right? Oops, CD packages. And I can look to see what's in there. And I wanna go into modules and I can look to see what's in there. And then you can see here inside modules, I have GitHub, so I'm gonna CD into GitHub because this uh, code that I downloaded was namespaced with GitHub is github.com forward slash goes to 11. And now I can see what's in there and I can CD into goes to 11. I'm not sure why there's exclamation points there, right? But there they are. So, and I'm sure somebody knows, but. But now I can look to see what's in there, and I have uh, my Golang training, and I have summer boot camp, and I have Go, Go programming. And the one I just downloaded was uh, this one right here, uh, Golang training. And so there's the Golang training, so I'm going to CD into the Golang training. And, uh, and when I look in there, you can see all of those folders. And, uh, and CD into 01, let's take a look and look in there and see what's in there and cd into hello world and take a look, see what's in there. And then cat main.go and there's the code. Yay. <laughs> so I know that was a little bit involved and, uh, and the reason that uh, we're really relying on the new version of the course, which you're watching here, and then the previous version will be after all these lectures. And, and you know, we saw that here. This is where the previous version of the course starts at lecture 205. Um, and they're all still valid because Go has great backwards compatibility and is built right the first time and it hasn't had monumental changes. Go modules is a, is a bit of a change, but it's like one of the only ones. And um, so anyhow, the reason the new version of the course, which you're watching now, uses the Golang playground, right? Right here, the Golang play playground is because you don't have to deal with all that. And I just wanted to show you the language and the coding and the fundamentals of programming. And so we're doing a lot of stuff right at the Golang playground. But then um, when we do get into the editor, the IDE, that's how you get all the code. All right, that's a little bit about Go modules and getting all the code. I hope that was super helpful and useful. Uh, I'm here for you. And if you have, you come across anything where you're stuck or you see that an update video is needed, just let me know and uh, I'll be there to, uh, to make it clear. <laughs> uh, enjoy, enjoy the next videos, uh, they're great. So the video right after this one um, is going to be, uh, uh, the video right after this one is going to be this video, which is, I'm just looking for the name of it. It's uh, da, 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 section three is going to be uh, uh, this one right here, IDEs, go land and go get. Right, but you kind of have just learned go getting the code and uh, you should be using VS Code. It's really my editor of choice right now. So this video after this, you might just fast forward through it just to see if there's anything else you pick up. All right, see you in the next videos.